Hey everybody, today we are looking at the G.I. Joe Classified Series Jody Shooter Craig, one of the original Joes, as uh, as we sort of learn in sort of the later comic books. She wasn't originally one of the original Joes, but she was sort of, I don't want to say retconned in there, but uh, you know, added in a little bit later in the story. Um, but if you want to know more about the backstory, I would say, you know, look her up on, uh, on, on the, uh, the Joe wikis, uh, you'll find far more information than I know. To be perfectly honest, I'm not really that familiar with the character apart from sort of what I've just said. Um, this is in fact the Night Force Jody Shooter Craig, although I do think this is probably going to be the only version that we get. In the same way that we got the Night Force Big Ben... And I don't know that Big Ben is a character that necessarily we will see two different versions of. I have a sneaking suspicion that Shooter is only going to be in this Night Force version. It's very, very close to the deco that we saw on the modern figure, or at least to the best of my knowledge. And it's it's sort of what her deco typically should look like. That's you know the It's the deco that I would expect this character would have. Um, but anyway, let's take a look at the package. First of all, as we've seen with a lot of these Night Force figures, you know, we get the, uh, the, the render on the front with the dark Energon. And as, as I've mentioned before, you know, Skybound now having the license for G.I. Joe, I wonder if there is, you know, something that's going to tie into the comics a little bit more. Maybe this is sort of them trying to tie the comic book to the toys and sort of include media in in sort of the overall storytelling that they're doing. But I like the storytelling that they're doing on the packaging, regardless of whether they tie it in to a comic book. Then we get the accessories up in the corner, as we've been getting, and then the art in the corner. Um, on the side, number 90, the blue sort of digital look with the QR code and the specialty icons, the icons again on the back, a little bit bigger and the full call out on the back of the box for the figure, as well as the accessories and a couple details. Now here they're calling out details for, for some of the, uh, the, the, the detail work in terms of the tampo. Uh, in terms of, you know, little deco hits. So you got a tattoo on the forearm, and then there's, uh, you know, some numbers that are going to appear up on the, uh, the web gear there. Shooter is 5.9 inches tall, or 151 millimeters. One of the shorter figures in the line. Uh, the last figure that I think was 5.9 might have been Tunnel Rat. Most of them are kind of 6 to 6.2. Um, so she's definitely going to be a little bit shorter. Legally's at the bottom of the back and on the bottom. And then on the side, we get the full art and number 90 in the series, for those of you keeping track. Let's get Shooter out of the box. So right out of the box, Shooter looks fantastic. She's a really good looking figure. There's some parts used here. But not a lot of it, as far as I can tell. The the arms look to be Lady J's arms. The upper thigh and the knee and sort of just below the knee look to be the movie Scarlet legs. Uh, but the, the torso looks new. The the boot and the shoe definitely look new. The uh, These sort of combat sneakers or whatever these sort of are meant to be. I don't know. I mean, I'm not 100% sold on them. Uh, they look a little bit Fortnite-y to me, if that makes sense. Uh, but that's really my only complaint. And it's a nitpick, not a complaint. I mean, it, they, they look fine. You know, they're they're sculpted fine. They, they look good. Um, you know, you've got these little zippers on the ankle that have a hit of uh, paint as well and color palette wise you know for a night force figure this looks great out of the box she came with sort of the gas mask look uh with those metallic green sort of eyes or lenses uh, they're not eyes they're lenses and you know the vest looks good the the pouches on the belt look good you know everything looks really really good the the tattoo is even fairly crisp now the camera's not gonna get it nice and crisp but 
take my word for it, you know, that, that tampo has been done really, really well. The numbers on the vest here, you can read the numbers on the vest fairly clearly as well. You know, take my word for it again. Um, but yeah, altogether, just a really, really good looking figure. And, um, you know, to get, to get another, you know, woman in the line uh to me is like something that's pretty cool i'm i'm very happy that they're that they're doing more women uh you know the the argument that female figures don't sell um i think is is kind of dated i mean i don't know maybe they maybe they don't but i still like them i still appreciate them and my girls still appreciate them so uh you know very very happy to have this figure in the collection for sure now, Shooter is, uh, you know, Shooter by name, Shooter by nature. The accessories with this are pretty cool and a little bit unique. So let's take a look at the accessories. Starting off with the alternate hair pieces, really, because you get one head, but you get a couple different hair pieces. So you get the, the gas mask is actually attached to the hair that's on the figure. Then we get sort of a, a normal hairstyle as well as a, a bit of like a, a stylized sort of braided hairstyle. I guess this is more, you know, for combat operations, maybe she, she braids the hair to sort of keep it out of her face. I'm not entirely sure. You know, they're not that dissimilar. Uh, you know, I don't know that it would make that much difference, um, you know, in terms of functionality. Uh, but in terms of aesthetics, they look quite different. Now, I will mention that uh, the paint apps on this one are kind of crummy. It's just they slapped some brown on the bottom, slapped some brown on the ponytail. This one's done quite a bit better. The, the braids are brown um, and there's a little bit of brown there, but then it's sort of shaded better at the bottom on this one. I wish they could have done that style of shading on this one that they've done on this, but it is the back of the figure. Uh, am I going to notice it once it's on there? Probably not too much, to be perfectly honest. Then we get a small blade. Now, this one's not painted. We've been getting a lot of, like, painted blades in the line. This one's not painted, uh, which is a little bit disappointing, but, I mean, I can live with that. It's uh, it's probably going to go in the, uh, the knife sheath on the vest there, and I doubt I'll ever take it out, to be perfectly honest. We get a pistol that I believe is new. Um, I don't remember seeing this pistol before, um, although it is entirely possible with my terrible memory that we have. Um, but like I said, to, to the best of my knowledge, I think that's new. Uh, then we get the rifle, you know, the shooter name should come with a sniper rifle and it does. This one's not too bad. It's not too crooked. It's got a weird kind of, you know, bend in it that will easily come out with a little bit of heat. Um, and it's a little crooked that way, too. I mean, I wish they wouldn't make these so soft. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. These are these are designed for a, a younger audience. You know, it's still still not, I don't think, quite designed for kids, but they have to sort of make them as though they are designed for kids. Uh, which is why you get, you know, a wobbly gun barrel. Again, a nitpick. I know that I can straighten this out with a little bit of heat, followed by a little bit of cold water, so I'm not really complaining. I'm just pointing out that, you know, the the weapons tend to be fairly crooked. Uh, and then we get the magazine, which is going to plug right in to the bottom of her weapon there um, at kind of a weird angle. Uh, I wish it went kind of straight in, uh, but, you know, such is life, and I can live with it. I It doesn't, bo again, doesn't bother me, just pointing it out. Um, move all this stuff back. This, this So this is the interesting thing. It, it, she doesn't have a backpack, uh, and there's no peg on the gun, uh, on the sniper rifle, so you get this adapter peg backpack um, holster carrying i don't know what to call it because it's just sort of a weird little piece uh that will plug into her back and then the sniper rifle will sort of plug in there and rest in this little hook uh that we've got here uh which is like i said it's it's curious it's interesting it's a different take 
uh, instead of having a strap or a backpack that this attaches to or whatever. So I'm, I'm kind of curious and interested to see uh, how that is going to work. Uh, so let's get her all geared up with that on her back. So here we have Shooter all geared up. She's got the pistol in the holster. She's got the knife in the sheath. She has got her sniper rifle on the back. And I have changed out the hair with the gas mask uh, for just sort of the standard hair. And, you know, paint apps aside, I think this, this hair piece uh, is my favorite of the bunch. Uh, the, the pistol, you know, is, is nice, fits in there nice and snug. The, uh, the, the knife is interesting. The, the, sh the, the sheath, the knife sheath itself has sort of a, a slit in it as well. So there's no way you would get that, you'd get that sort of curved blade in there without it. So that's sort of a clever way. And from the front, you don't see it at all. You really have to like look for the, that little sort of opening, uh, to even notice, but it holds it in there pretty secure. Uh, speaking of holding things nice and secure, that adapter, that little backpack sort of bit on the back, you can see that it holds the rifle very, very nicely. Um, and it's quite clever. You kind of, you kind of just, you know, maneuver it into place and, and plug it right on just like that and, uh, nice and secure. The, the torso itself and the vest is, is sculpted. Uh, so here, I may as well show it cause it's, uh, it's, it's easier to probably explain it when I'm showing it. It's not a vest over top of the torso. The torso is the vest. This is a sculpted vest rather than, you know, an add on. Now this front panel appears to be glued on. So I'm, I'm thinking we'll probably see this torso again with like a, a, a different, you know, application on the chest here. So I don't know that we're going to see another version of Shooter, uh, but I think we will see this torso again, uh, maybe sooner rather than later. I don't know. Um, but anyway, the uh, as, I, as I said, you know, that just plugs into the back and it's nice and secure because it fits nice and snug because it's going all the way into the figure's back rather than it going through a vest, um, which seems to be kind of the issue why some of them don't really stay on the back as well. Um, as this one does and I put it on upside down but uh, yeah there you go so as I said a nice secure hold for that sniper rifle and I like that she can carry all her gear you know alternate hairstyles notwithstanding I'm, I'm gonna consider that she can she can carry all her gear she could probably carry these in her arms if she wanted to but that would be a little bit odd uh, so I'm, I'm pretty happy that she can carry all her gear on her person. So there's Shooter with her sniper rifle. Uh, the, the weapon is really, really big. It, it, it almost feels a little bit too big. Um, you know, so as far as sort of overall impressions, that weapon seems a little too big. The, the combat sneakers and the paint app on the hair... Uh, are, are some minor drawbacks, but altogether, as I said, very, very happy to get another female figure within the wave. Uh, the, the, the women are, are awesome. Lady J, Scarlet, Cover Girl, Zorana, Baroness, they've all been, in my opinion, some of the standout figures in the line, uh, and Shooter is no exception. Uh, so I would strongly recommend this figure if you're at all interested. I think it's a great figure. Um, that being said, I believe that this is a Walmart exclusive, so it's not going to be the easiest figure to get from what I've heard. But in my opinion, you know, you wait long enough, this stuff pops up. It, it, it's typically not too hard to get. Um, I didn't have any issue getting this thing. Um, but, uh, you know, your mileage may vary in that respect, but altogether, as I said, a very, very strong release from the Hasbro GI Joe classified line and definitely a figure that I would recommend. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up. 
If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And if you don't want to miss any future videos, please hit the bell icon for notifications when new videos drop. Until next time, bye-bye.